Hey guys, welcome back to the happiest hour on earth. Tonight, we decided we're gonna talk about something that is coming up soon, and that is Valentine's Day. So we figured it was a good time to talk about some of the most romantic places and things to do in the parks, both in Disneyland and Disney World. So we've got a nice little list for you guys if you're either going sometime this year before Valentine's Day or if you would like to plan something for next year. So let's go ahead and get started on this. All right, so we are so excited to get into this list. And as we were creating this list, there were some that we had been to before, but then a few that we had not actually been to yet. And so these would be great, whether it's for Valentine's Day or let's say an anniversary or just you want to throw a romantic date night at a Disney park. And, um, and we are here to inform you guys on the best places for a romantic meal. So yeah. I cannot wait to get started on this. And actually... This drink that we are making this week is actually ab available February 1st. So the day we're actually Today, filming this yeah. through March 1st um, at the Grand Californian Hotel at the Craftsman Bar there. We saw this drink. Uh, Disney Parks posted about it and we were like, yes, we have to make a Valentine's Day drink. Um, and this thing is it was beautiful. It's so fitting. It's so I mean great. It might not even come out perfect on the camera, but yeah, we will have a reel see. for this. And it was so fun to make. And actually, it really was. yeah, you made this. Do you want to explain did. what is in this? Yeah. So um, it was a few steps for sure. Um, so we had to make like a strawberry puree. Uh, so we did that first. It's just yeah. like strawberries, lemon juice and some sugar. And you just kind of like grind it all up together. Um, and then we set that aside. Um, even before that, initially, we put our glasses into the freezer because yeah. we wanted to get them nice and cold because the next step was to put some, uh, like, chocolate syrup on the, the like, cup. shell stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we use. I'm not exactly sure if that's what they use, but it works it helps the best a lot. that way yeah. because it, like, hardens instantly if it's on something cold. So we put that on the, on the glasses and then made the cocktail itself which is very basic after that yeah. it's just a couple of ingredients but um make sure to check rum. it out on a reel for sure yeah, yeah yeah it's a nice little like pink drink we got some strawberry hearts to garnish it so, so it looks really tasty awesome. and it smells really tasty so i'm actually dying to yeah give it a taste. let's go for this we haven't actually made like a sweet drink i don't think yeah, on our podcast like i mean we've done like a drink yeah we've of. done a pandora one which was a sweet but a different oh, type yeah. of sweet it wasn't like a dessert you know yeah, like, like a dessert one. Oh man i am so excited let's let's Me go too. give this a try let's do it all right all those strawberries on whoa okay whoa wow Ooh. Interesting. wow okay so, I I think I thought it was gonna be sweeter. I get yeah. a lot more chocolate than I am. Yeah, yeah. Well, chocolate is sweet, but I thought it was gonna be like like more of not, like a sugary sweet. Yeah, it was like balanced pretty well. It is really good. I think maybe too much strawberry puree. I feel like I'm getting a lot of the strawberry in it. It tastes I don't know. like a chocolate strawberry. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So that, if you're into true. that, yeah, that's it tastes true. like a chocolate fondue strawberry. If you really strawberry. like. Chocolate strawberries. Which I do. With alcohol. Get this drink for sure. It's really tasty. Yeah, like it. You taste the raspberry rum just slightly. I feel like, I don't know. I was going to say I feel like that could be bumped up a little bit, but I actually think it's a good blend. Um, yeah, and you know, we didn't well, know the exact ratios. We had to kind of estimate based on like similar drinks. Similar to cocktails, yeah. So it may be slightly off, but. It's really tasty. I think it's a good drink for sure. This I could have after a meal as a dessert mm -hmm. drink. I could have mm -hmm. one. I don't. This is. I mean, if you're into the sweet drinks, you get you get pound a couple back. Yeah. I I'm not like the biggest sweet drink fan, but I mean, is, this yeah. after a meal would be amazing. Definitely like a dessert type drink, like not something you would want to have with dinner at all. It's it's like. It's mm. a dessert thing, but it's good. I like sure. that though. I yeah. would like have some chocolates on the side with it. Oh, actually some dark chocolate on the side. Oh, really that's good. actually really good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you guys are trying to, um, for the, for the men or women out there who are trying to schmooze your, your date for Valentine's, I would, I would try to figure out how to make this. Um, we, like I said, we've done the reel for it and, uh, and just bust this out 
and they'll they'll love you for it. And so. um, good date night yeah. drink for sure. Definitely, I like it. it's called strawberry tuxedo. Strawberry tuxedo, yeah, mm-hmm. it's so good. I All love right. it. Uh, Let's should we jump in? Yep, we okay. have quite a fun list here for you guys. So before we jump into this list, there's a couple things you should know. Um, you can't just waltz on, waltz on in not to anymore. any of these. Yeah, not to any. Things not have anymore. changed. <laughs> yeah, and so you will probably for most of these need a dinner or a dining reservation mm-hmm. in order to actually go to one of these places. Um, so now you can book a restaurant up to 60 days in advance and sometimes they go really quick mm-hmm. i mean and sometimes you just forget right i would say set a reminder before your disney trip 60 days uh, in advance go ahead and book some are harder to get than others and so we actually recommend this service that we have not tried yet but we know We've some people who have tried and yeah they, they give it rave reviews so this mm-hmm. is called mouse dining um i think it's, i don't know if there's an app but you could definitely there's a site and you could get alerts when a specific restaurant has an opening during the time that you are on your trip. So this is great because sometimes people cancel, they can't go on the trip anymore, or they found um, maybe a fast pass or something, Mm -hmm. you know, interacts with that reservation. So they cancel it. Um, But go ahead and do that. And I know of a lot of people who have gotten reservations this way. So mouse dining, you you know all your dreams can come true with uh, all your (laughs) all your dining dreams can come true with mass dining because Uh, i mean think about how many people end up having to randomly cancel their reservations it happens all the time and so this site is so helpful in getting you in you know all those resis you want yeah yeah like you know instantly and you can just book it right there if if you get that notification yeah. so it's pretty exactly. pretty helpful it's pretty awesome yeah even though we haven't used it and i think we need to use it i on think the next we one. do yeah. i definitely heard a lot of good reviews so oh for sure all right should we jump in yeah let's we're gonna start in it. disneyland we're starting in disneyland uh we definitely know this area the best as yeah. you know we're disneyland people um we didn't really in disney world like have a lot of sit down meals yeah. so we have like a couple that we can say for sure are good from there but we are generally a little bit more knowledgeable about disneyland ones because we've been to most of those (laughs) at this point so uh our first one on the list of course is going to be the blue bayou yes uh this place is amazing we've been there a handful of times um together i think we've probably gone a few times apart as well yeah but we did go there um for our meal after yeah after after Chris proposed to me uh in front of the castle he had made reservations at Blue Bayou so and we were a little delayed on the proposal and I remember I like proposed we like soaked it in for literally like one minute and then I was like we have Blue to Bayou run reservations. <laughs> and yeah. we ran. That was our first act as an engaged couple, running to Blue Bayou. Mm-hmm. To and get we a made it, it. We made it late. We were like, time. we were like 15 minutes late, but they said they reserved it for like 20 minutes, I think. Oh, and then so we were we able to go in. It. And I this think this weird time, too. It was like at 2 30. No, it was like at 4, I think. Was, was it 4? Was it 4? Oh. Um, but yeah, I think yeah. especially because it was like a proposal thing that we're probably being extra lenient yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, we so got a yeah, free little tiny cake. Yeah, they did bring us a little <laughs> celebratory Some, cake yeah. or something. Um, but yes, Blue Bayou, if you have not been, is perfect for dates, uh, date nights. It's the ambiance is great. You know, the lighting is dim. It's just super romantic and fun. Seeing the boats um, go by. Pirates. Peaceful, yeah, it's, it's located peaceful. in Pirates of the Caribbean, if you guys don't know. I'm sure. But yeah, yeah, you guys probably know. But um, it's definitely great food, great service. Um, they do offer alcohol now, which is kind of a recent thing yeah. that they didn't used to. But with, you know, um, Oga's Cantina opening up and kind of alcohol becoming a little bit more of a thing in the park they um they now allow wine beer and a hurricane which is a cocktail that originated in new orleans so yeah it's a great place um definitely hit that up if you want a good date for sure meal date dinner whatever meal date dinner if you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we actually had a we went to new orleans in 2019 we actually went to the place where they invented the hurricane and then it became a staple 
and we were like, it oh, this is going to be great. And it was so it was bad. sugary it was, and Yeah, crazy. I mean, I'm sure it was I'm a sure horrible Disney would be a little bit more. Cane. Yeah, it was probably just that like. That sounds so bad to say, though, since they, like, created know, it. But it was, but it was pretty intense. Because it's, like, such a popular spot to get them, I'm sure they just have to, like, the Bust turnover is yeah, probably yeah, really yeah. quick. So they just have to put them together. And, yeah, it was yeah. not great. It was very sugary. It is, but yeah, New Orleans, I, we have not had a drink there yet, but I do want to go back. That's so cool that they allow that now. Um, and I love that it's select, you know, it's not like you could just, you have to have your drink there. You, you can't walk around with beer or wine and stuff like that. Yeah. I like the idea of Disneyland kind of remaining semi-alcohol free, right? Mm-hmm, While mm-hmm. California Adventure uh, has that option, but that's cool because it's almost yeah. like an exclusive thing, right? Exactly. Um, but next up, we're going to go over to California Adventure. Mm-hmm. This is a really romantic spot. Um, this is Carthay Circle. So mm-hmm. when you're on Buena Vista Street, you know, that big old theater looking thing at the end. So it, after yeah, the theater Snow White was aired on for the first time. Yeah. So it's it's very 1920s, 1930s um, esque. And yeah, like you said, this is where, um, you know, Snow White was premiered, the real Carthay Circle. But if you go in there, there is a restaurant. I believe it's on the second floor. I think the waiting mm-hmm. is on the bottom floor, right? And this there's is... a little bar, I think, on the first. Oh, floor. okay. There's like just the... while you're waiting. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, if I remember. I, were, I remember recall, got a pisco think... sour there, and it was really, really mm-hmm. good. Uh, but this is very 1920s feel. Very, um, it's cool because even though it doesn't feel very quote unquote Disney, and like you know, <laughs> I don't know how I did that head bob, but just kind of like. <laughs> Oh, wow, we're like definitely at a Disney restaurant. Like it feels very fine dining, but there is a lot of cool references to Walt Disney Mm -hmm. from the 30 or from the 20s when he arrived in Hollywood. Yeah. Which is so cool to see that. Such a cool theme to a restaurant. Like lots of cool pictures and things up on the walls and the ambiance is very good. Very good. And I think it's just, yeah, like pretty much American food, um, but just like high class American food. And then like, your retro classic cocktails that were served during that like almost prohibition era type stuff Mm -hmm. it was it's really really good so yeah that definitely has to hit our list because carthay circle yeah is amazing and can we just appreciate can we just uh how how great they changed california adventure oh my god i remember walking into california adventure when it first opened up and the years following that just being like oh wow this is definitely a lesser park than to disneyland and it's still is compared to Disneyland, but they wow, Buena Vista Street up, like, is crazy. I too love amazing. Buena Vista Street. It's, it's like, a perfect comparison to Main Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like different, totally, but it makes you feel that like Walt Disney, like you know, back in the twenties feel. Like you just feel so much of that. Oh yeah. In Buena Vista Street, I love it. It's so cool. They did a great job. Yeah. Okay, so moving on from Carthay Circle. We are going to move on to the Napa Rose, which is actually inside of the Grand Californian Hotel. Yeah. We actually have not been to this one. And for some reason, I had it confused with a different place all this time. We were When we were looking up these places for our list, I for some reason thought it was in a different location. And I was like, oh, it's part of the hotel. Yeah. So this is like a very, very fine dining upscale restaurant um it's won some awards i guess yeah it's I, it's i think heavily like wine country influence that's why it's called napa rose mm-hmm. um so i'm not entirely sure what like the cuisine is like it's probably kind I of i think it's yeah i think it's still like upscale californian i feel yeah. like that's kind of vi- the interesting thing as i was looking at this is napa rose has won so many awards and the chef that started or you know that started napa rose is actually the same one that is kind of in charge of carthay circle oh um so really really cool cool. so like if you're i think napa rose might be just a tad more expensive um and you don't have to be staying at the hotel um to go Mm -hmm. to napa rose um but there's that difference you know right like if you want to be in the park you go to carthay circle if you want a little more like secluded not secluded but you know a little bit away from all the the craziness yeah, yeah napa rose is a really good even more upscale alternative from yeah. what i have seen i think so yeah I, I believe that i've seen it like walking past it before because we've, we've gone to the storyteller cafe which is also a part of grand californian i love that place too i was almost gonna put that on this list as well but 
not as fancy and like fine dining as an Napa Rose probably. So we went with that one, but yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it's a very, very nice spot for a date. Yeah. So check that one out. Definitely. We'll have to we'll have to hit it up sometime. Next time, yeah. We'll need a little babysitter and then we could um make our way down. Yeah, maybe to, we'll uh, never stay, go stay in the Grand California in one of yeah. these times and Easy. walk on down to the Napa. Walk downstairs. <laughs> oh, for sure. Wow to have that amount of money. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? That flexibility. Hey, this podcast is gonna pop off, then we'll stay at the California <laughs> yeah. hotel all the time. No, just kidding. Not likely. Um, <laughs> not very likely. But um moving on from that, we have the Wine Country Trattoria. So this can be found in California Adventure. This is another thing that we've always wanted to do, mm-hmm. but we just find ourselves so I don't know how we caught up it. in our normal routine of going to rides, 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 you know, and then and going to restaurants that we love and getting food that yeah. we love. But the Wine Country tr- Trattoria is really, really cool. So this is um, after you're making that kind of like bend around. Kind of by- you're on your way to like. The wharf. Yeah, kind of near Cars Land and then also to the wharf and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, on the right side, there is a very winery looking place. Yeah. And so I think there's um, Mendocino Terrace mm-hmm. is a place where you could do like wine flights and have a lot of wine and all this stuff. But the Wine Country Tr- Trattoria, I believe, is a part of that. And it's that is also a restaurant. Um, and so it's kind of this Mediterranean garden setting. Um amazing wine selection that they have there and some Italian specialties when it comes mm-hmm. to food. So I don't that know why sounds we haven't amazing. There yet. I know the I fact that, that you could like do happen. wine tasting in uh California Adventure, I, I think that's pretty amazing. But so romantic. So yeah, literally perfect. anytime you go there and you're feeling for a, a date night, Small date day, times. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. I think we're gonna need Hit to that. do that on our I next trip. I know. I think we Ooh, have to set aside some, you know a reservation. Down a that. couple of wines, go on Guardians. I always revert to Guardians after a couple of drinks because it's just it's a, it's an amazing <laughs> it's experience. A stomach ache or a vomit waiting to happen. Uh, I think. <laughs> I don't know, maybe for you. No, I'll let you go then. Um, so, anyways, we're gonna move on from that one now. Uh, the last one that we have on our list for Disneyland is Lamplight Lounge. Um, yes. So obviously not like as much of like the date spot as some of these other ones we've talked about. But it is, like, I would say a nice, like, sit-down spot for dinner or lunch or whatever and a drink. Yeah. Um, it's like a casual romance. Casual, like, yeah. Like- and, of course, you know, it is family-friendly, so there might be some, like, families there with their kids or whatever. So it may not be, like, quite the romantic setting as, you know, some of the other places. But it's a beautiful view, good drinks, good food. I mean, what more can you yeah. ask for? And when and if World of Color makes its way back anytime soon, fingers crossed, because I yeah. miss that so I much. Know. So good. Um, there's a package you can do where you can be there in Lamplight Lounge and have a nice view of World of Color. So yeah. it's honestly to be by that like lagoon or waterway, whatever, mm-hmm. um, at Pixar Pier is just so so nice. It's we had a great beautiful. time. Um, I know. We only went once, and it was with our son. And even though Not you know, it was, fussy, it was still romantic, it was still romantic. Day, but... It was nice. We had a nice view of the water. Um, mm-hmm. Great cocktails. Very like, it's Disney without being Disney. Mm-hmm. I would say like right like. Well, it's Pixar. Yeah, it's Pixar, but it's not. I don't know. They do it so well. It's like those elements, the so influence. you still feel like you're yeah. in Disney, but it's not. You know, there's Mr. Potato Head's not going to come up. Yeah, it's not overdone. Like, (laughs) it's like a classy way that they do it. You know, it's like the sketches of, you know, all the characters and stuff. And I think it's so well done. Yeah, a lot of it, I think, is supposed to be modeled after the Pixar Animation Studios. Like, there's, I think there's some areas with like the brick walls, and we've been to Pixar before. Uh, Amazing experience, Mm -hmm. but they're like the buildings kind of look that way kind of look, has yeah. that kind of feel which is really really yeah. cool um i can totally see that influence oh i love that the way that they made it and i loved cove bar when it was there but i think that lamplight lounge is even more special it, it, and yeah. super fitting for the way that that area has become at this point definitely i want to go back i know i love it all right so now we are going to fly over to the other side of the country <laughs> we're going to go to <laughs> disney world um Lots of so, options over there. Uh, yeah, a lot of options. So I'm gonna start with one. We're gonna we're gonna start in Magic Kingdom. 
So this is going to be Be Our Guest. Mm -hmm. And um, Be Our Guest is... Like what we actually we went when we were on our um, Disney World trip, mm -hmm. and I would say it's definitely romantic and definitely such a great experience. But a we lot were of there people for try to go. Time, yeah, we were there for lunchtime, so not as I guess romantic. I don't know how it would differ from like lunch to dinner, but like you said about, um, I guess about one of the one of the earlier ones is that okay? I think Lamplight Lounge. Is that there there are gonna be families there. There's gonna be kids running around, there's gonna be things like that. So, you know, it's not as your own, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. kind of this intimate experience. However, it is a really great experience. There is three different dining sections. There's the grand ballroom, which is, you know, with that big chandelier where they where Beautiful. they dance. It's it's really incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh the West Wing, which is a little bit that's where they have the the rose that's kind of wilting. Mm -hmm. So kind of the scare if you want a scary romantic dinner, <laughs> yeah. go to the West Wing. A little dark. Um yeah, if you're like one of those gothic couples, hey, we were we we're not really gothic, but we, you know, we feel you. <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> um but and then there's the castle gallery, which is like the library, like Bell's library section. So really cool that you kind of pick where that's at. Um, so lunch and dinner are prefix. I'm not fancy enough. I think is it prefix? Pre, pre, prefix, pre, yeah. prefix. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to pay a set price. It's going to be sixty two dollars, and you get. Uh, I think it's a three course meal. Mm -hmm. Um, we went when we actually had a free dining package, and it yeah. worked for that, which was really really great. That was awesome. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a three course menu, French. Kind of theme. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is definitely something if you want to experience, it's going to be very Disney um, oriented and w you get that kind of family friendly vibe too. So it's not going to be as intimate for yeah. a couple, but if you're there with your family too, you know, it's a great yeah, place. For it sure. is. It is. That was, that was, I remember my meal being very good and it was just lunch. So I'm yeah. sure that dinner and everything there is delicious. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. I want to go back again. Yeah. Uh, next on the list, we have the California Grill, which is in a resort. Actually, it's in the Contemporary. Um, I've heard a lot about this one before, mm. and I would love to check it out. Um, for sure. Apparently, there's like a dress code. Like, it's fancy to that level, um, as are, I guess, a few of the other fancier restaurants in Disney World. Uh, but, yeah, this... The food is supposed to be delicious. We did not get to go here, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it's like the 15th floor, so it's like way up there. And you can be there during fireworks yeah. and have a great view of the fireworks. So like... I heard it's like one of the best views of, yeah. of the fireworks. And it's um, like a great date night to me, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and it's the closest resort to Magic Kingdom. So... Mm -hmm. I saw pictures from it. It's not only that you could see Magic Kingdom. You could see the whole Seven Seas Lagoon. So it's this amazing, like, expanse of uh, so much of Disney World. And the cool thing about the fireworks show, too, is that they actually pipe in the music to the restaurant. So, so it's cool. not like you're just seeing the fireworks happen. Like, almost at eye level, you are, like, actually hearing the show as well, you know, which mm -hmm. is really, really cool. Um and yeah, it, it honestly looks so amazing, and I would I would love to go it there. Does, yeah. yeah, and like you have to get kind of fancy to go there, so it's like good good spot for a date. You yeah, know, for a little Valentine's date night. And that I think is probably going to be like we've talked about, you know, the family ish ones, and then the you know the kind of coupley ones. Um, that one's definitely going to be on the Disney coupley ones. Yeah. But we're going to bring it back to the family ones because there is another place that. Um, we would love to go to, and we, we, we chose be our guest over this when we went there, but mm -hmm. the Royal table. Now this is going to be a crazy experience because you are actually dining in Cinderella's castle, mm -hmm. which is super, super awesome. Um, what an experience. And yeah, I know. Seriously. And this is going to be like more of your very like Disney. If you're a hardcore Disney fan, like this is, this is where you want to go. Um, it's also prefix menu as well. $62. Um, and just like be your guest, there's probably like, they usually do character dining experiences here right now. They aren't doing that, um, due to COVID and stuff, but 
I think certain meals are character dining ones. So that might throw off the romantic mood a little bit. But I think some meals aren't that right. So just to cater a little bit more to like an older audience. But Mm -hmm. this is definitely something if you guys are both like really heavily into Disney, Mm -hmm. um, that could definitely be a very romantic Disney E spot i agree yeah that would be quite an experience to get to dine in the castle i know so Feel awesome like Cinderella and prince charming so know? awesome um so hopefully anyways there's no mice there though yeah yeah hopefully they, they keep the, the mice out of the castle um <laughs> <laughs> so next up on the list we have a place called la salier this is in the canada pavilion in epcot um, this is steakhouse, kind of like a wine cellar vibe, I guess. Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit on the fancier side as well. Um, I don't know a ton about this one, except it's talked about well. Like I've heard good things about it for sure. The food's really good and, you know, wine. This is cool because I think this might be one of the fanciest restaurants in Epcot. Sounds like um, it probably is, yeah. Yeah, and so if you're... If you're at Epcot, you know, you're drinking around the world, especially if you start in Mexico and then you end at Canada. <laughs> uh, maybe you don't want to go to a fancy restaurant after you've uh, drinking 10 drinks, right? Because then yeah. the 11th one would be Epcot or Canada. Is that right? Um, yeah. So maybe. Yeah. So maybe don't do that. But if you want to if you want a fancy dinner rather than just, you know, drinking around the world. Um, this one is definitely a good pick. And mm-hmm. apparently the steak is really, really good. And yeah. I think this might be be one of the only like steakhouse steakhouses yeah. in disney world i haven't I seen any so. other ones i mean other places probably have steak obviously but, but i think like this is one of the legit um, steakhouse yeah. yeah for sure so definitely one to check out if that's your vibe you're going for um mm-hmm. next up is also in epcot this is saint angel in restaurant restaurant it has an e at the end restaurante Estrante. <laughs> that sounds like more Italian than <laughs> yeah. um, than the Mexico Pavilion. But yeah, like like I just said, you can find this in the Mexico Pavilion. Now this is oh man, the ambiance here. When we walked into this area, um, we got we just went to the bar that was there, uh, La Cava de. Was it? Everyone La just Cava. calls it La Cava. La Cava, yeah. <laughs> we had to get our first drink there, which is the avocado margarita, which we made a reel for. One of our first reels. Yeah. Awesome. So that was good. A great. Drink. Um, but I wish we had food there because this thing, it's kind of like the Disney World's version of the Blue Bayou, right? Like mm-hmm. you you walk into pirates and it's just constantly that twilight kind of You feel dark. like you're outside in yeah. the dark. Yeah. Yeah, this looks like a I mean, it's it's very intimate feeling and it's like kind of you have that mayan kind of like pyramid type thing so it's kind of like this mayan ruins kind of feel but very very i mean the vibes are real here mm-hmm. like totally. this is it, it, like this is great if you want to do a lunch right because you go in for lunchtime and it's going to feel like you're having It'll a nice night anyways. dinner yeah. um and honestly when we walked out of that place in epcot i was like I just want to go back. Like I loved the mm-hmm. vibe that was there. Again. Yeah. Then you're in the bright sun and you're just like, oh, oh. hot again. I remember yeah. that day was so hot. And we went inside and we were just like soaking in the cool air. Oh, I know. I, like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah. So if you're, if you want a really nice date night and also, um, are down with Mexican food, which who isn't down for Mexican food? Obviously. Uh, this is a great choice in and Epcot. Great alcohol. Great alcohol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mars. Ah, so good. So yeah. good. Okay, so the next one that we have on the list is called Victoria and Alberts. It's actually in the Grand Floridian Resort, which goals that place Goal. is so beautiful. It has also been given some awards and other accolades. It's it's like American cuisine, but just very elegant. Yeah, it's um, like the, it's like super old victorian style theming with like modern american food it sounds really good i know yeah it's so interesting like i don't know if you saw many photos of this place but it's just like so upscale sounds beautiful and and fancy and it's in the grand floridian so which is amazing yeah (laughs) and i think this is one of the most like luxurious restaurants there and not really I feel like not really our vibe. Like we would kind of go more middle tier, mm-hmm. like more something that's 
you know, very vibey, but also still romantic where mm-hmm. this is like very upscale. Um, like fine you're going to be dropping the big bucks. Yeah. Fine dining at uh, Disney World. And so I don't know. I saw the pictures and I was like, this looks really nice. But I'm like, I feel like any of the ones above us or above this um, entry is a little more our vibe. But if you yeah. are that type of couple that is just like, let's just go out to this like Victorian style restaurant and just live it up in a fancy way. Um, <laughs> this is going to be your place for sure. Yeah. Now on the total opposite side of this, but still a date night. Fun <laughs> so, anyways. Yeah. So this is called the sci-fi dine in theater. I Definitely a little bit different here. than Victoria and Albert's. Yeah. I never knew this was a thing. It's it's so awesome. It yeah. so fun. So this is going to be found in Hollywood Studios. Um, if you're the type of couple that kind of like hears Victoria and Albert's and is like, oh, like that doesn't sound like a fun day night and want something a little more kitschy and a little more, you know, just kind of fun with your date night. But this still is gonna, intimate. Still, yeah, still intimate. This is a restaurant that is inside, also like nighttime all the time. So it's modeled to look like a drive-in theater, which is really cool. And mm-hmm. all the booths are like this, these like 50s style cars, but it only fits about like two people in there. You sit in these little, this little car that's all over the place. Um, you have a little booth there and they actually show old um, like, Retro flicks. Yeah, like sci-fi. Some, I guess, not sci-fi, but like these 50 black and white shows. And so you could just like eat your food, be in your own little separate car, uh, your own little separate car booth. It's like car booth. And so just fun. like watch these things. So if you're, if you're feeling, I feel like this would be fun for a, um, I, I guess Walt Disney World does a Dapper Day too, right? They must. I think so. But if they do do a Dapper Day, this would be so fun because you're all dressed up in your Dapper attire Which and go like, to this like 50s style the retro. Fact that they actually used to uh. do that. I think about how like back in that day, like you didn't leave the house if you weren't like dressed, dressed to the nines. Yeah. Like that is so crazy to me to think about. Like you had to get fancy. To Especially go out. like. That's crazy to think about, especially during the pandemic. I work at home and I'm in sweats all the time. Yeah. Like I'm in my joggers I'm in all the time. And t-shirts all the time. It's a little like, bit of a different. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I can never do a park with a. I don't with a tie. care enough about what other people think of my attire, and I don't think I would do well living in that. I know. I would do. I would do one day. I'd do a dapper day if oh, I was like sure. mentally prepared for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but to all the live time. No, in no. that time where that's an everyday thing. No, thank yeah. you. But yeah, I think that pretty much concludes our list of romantic restaurants for a date night. And there are so many other restaurants um, that we just weren't able to fit on our list. But if you search some um, or just have heard about some, definitely check those out. These are the ones that really stuck out to us. Mm-hmm. Um, some of these, like we said, we have been to. Others we had just heard really good reviews about and also just kind of backed it up with um, other reviews that we saw on online. Um, but these are some that we would love to go visit. Yeah, so totally. definitely um, do your own research, though, and and see what really fits kind of your vibe and your style. But yeah, um, yeah. With that, though, we had one other thing we were going to talk about, which is the Sweetheart Night. Um, there's actually, I think, like five or so nights in yeah, it. It's not like a bunch of nights in a row, but a few different nights leading up to Valentine's Day. So it's like a special ticketed event, like, you know, like the Halloween and the Christmas ones that Disney has. Um, so it's after dark, so it's like 8 to midnight, but it's special access at like 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts at 114 a person, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just like special stuff, like a special fireworks show, some character meet and greets, musicians and dancing, like special food and costumes and that kind of thing. So it's just kind of a fun Valentine's event. Yeah. And this is, I mean, by the time you guys hear this, it'll probably have passed or almost passed. But I mean, I think that they're going to try to do these yearly. So mm-hmm. that's something that you, um, you know, if you kind of want to do that type of thing. Um, I heard those are pretty fun. I know yeah. some people kind of go kind of that 50s retro um, couple you know, outfits. And I think there's like some 
I feel like in the past they've done like swing kind of yeah, like bands and all that stuff. Um, Fantasy Fair, right? Fantasy Fair, I believe. Yeah. So if you want to kind of just like live that retro date night kind of vibe, like this is something definitely for you, Sounds so um, fun. which really would be fun. Um, and, th- you know, this comes with other after hours events that they're planning. I know there's mm-hmm. a, a villains one and a Star Wars one, I believe, this year. So, so um, after hours parties definitely sound fun. You are paying a good amount, but there's going to be a lot less people in the park. So yeah. you kind of get to experience Disneyland as, you know, I don't know, just a little more intimate feeling, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I think those ticketed events sound like a fun time to do, like once for sure. Yeah. Cause, yeah, you get so much more of the park to yourself. Yeah. And it's like, Themey, you know? Yeah, I love it. I love it. And then if you want something else romantic, you know, we might as well just add this in. But yeah, a lot of the resorts will have a spa. um, So you could do like a couple's massage or, you know, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also just a lot of resorts just have like some really um, nice restaurants and other activities that you could do um, Mm -hmm. that are romantic. But for sure. There's, I mean, there's so much that Disney offers, you know, if you, if you want to take a break from the the park days, or if you just want to, um, step away for a little bit, you know, during the day and do something separate, you know, there's so, so much to do, especially in Disney world. I yeah. mean, they offer so many different resorts and so many different activities, but you could find those in Disneyland as well. Um, yeah. you know, I think that's great because I feel like there are a lot of Disney fans that just you know want to do the rides some that just want to do the food Mm -hmm. but some just want to do like the activities and the experiences and you know disney offers so much for everyone a little bit of everything you know yeah yeah for sure you can definitely find that in disney yeah like you said definitely definitely, especially disney world just because there's so many resorts yeah and they all probably offer something a little different yeah definitely but anyways we just wanted to say thank you for listening um i know valentine's day i guess is um a couple weeks away still yeah yeah yeah. by the time this episode comes out we we might have a special guest on next week we're still trying to um tie dates down yeah for sure um but we just want to thank you so much for listening we have some other topics coming up that will be really fun to discuss but um yeah we love you guys love that's good you know we're doing valentine's episode yeah we love you so much (laughs) and we will see you guys next week we'll see you next time guys Bye. bye